review video of my 90 JDM MR2 uh, turbo uh, that I picked up from a MR2 OC member of Tim Smith. I just kind of want to give a little once over of the car, uh, my impressions of the car since I've had it now about two months. Um, and just little things that are different about the, the JDM MR2 compared to the USDM MR2. Um, I do, I'm grateful enough to have uh, both a USDM and a JDM. Um, so little things that are different compared to my 91 compared to this 90. So when we get to the location here, um, I'll pick you guys back up. Um, and then we'll uh, kind of do a walk around and, and talk about things that I like about this car and things that are different compared to my USDM. So we'll see you guys shortly. All right, guys, we're up here in Washington, Wisconsin. Um, just gonna do a little walk around of the car, let you guys know about it, uh, tell you some cool things that I think are neat off of this car compared to the other one, uh, or I should say a USDM. Um, so yeah, we'll just do a quick walk around here. All right, so hopefully the wind isn't bad. Um, we'll find out here after I'm done recording this, I guess. So, all right, here it is. It's a 1990 uh, right-hand drive turbo MR2. Uh, it came into the U.S. Uh, December 25th of 2016. Uh, Tim Smith um, was the original owner of it here in the in the United States. Uh, I'm second owner. I've owned it for about two months now. Um, I've put 6,000 kilometers on it in those two months. So first thing, of course, first thing that you notice that's different, of course, it's right-hand drive. Um, the people's faces when they see me coming through intersections and not realizing that, hey, there's no there's no driver or no passenger. Uh, the guy's sitting on the wrong side of the car. So that's one thing, of course, that sticks out right away. Uh, the other thing is um, it is a turbo. Um, it doesn't have the markings on the side moldings. Uh, I believe they were removed um, prior when the car was resprayed in Japan. Uh, so I'll have to get the decals and re-put those on. Uh, it does have the OEM mud flaps which is a big thing to me. Um, I wanted them for my US version and I can never find a set of them uh, in good condition to put on my car. Um, the other thing is, is this car does have the P1 Buddy Club 16 inch wheels. Um, they look good on the car. Um, I think once the car gets a little bit more low, it might look a little bit better, but to me, they look a little tiny. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, other thing is, in the interior here, since this is a GT model, uh, it has the leather seats with Alcaterra inserts and the Alcaterra door cards, so that's nice. Uh, this car does have the power folding mirrors. Uh, you push the button, mirrors fold in, which is cool. It also does have the JDM following fog lights. You turn the switch to the follow mode. Um, you can have them with the headlights even off. You can have just fogs and it'll follow the road um, as you're driving. When you turn the steering wheel, there's a little sensor inside the wheel uh, turns. Uh, the only thing I've changed so far is I've added a, a boost gauge because I added a uh, manual boost controller. And I just wanted to make sure we were pulling uh, the proper boost numbers and avoiding fuel cut. <clears throat> uh, with the Japanese model again too, if you're an MR2 guy, you would know. Uh, it has auto air conditioning, auto air con, which is awesome. Um, the AC still works in this car, which is awesome. Um, another thing I did change already too is I purchased a 94 JDM steering wheel from a gentleman out in uh, Northwest MR2 OC. Um, he hooked me up with that after the Bear Mountain meet. He sent it down to me. Uh, this car does have the Danism floor mats, which they are getting a little worn. I might pull them out just because I don't want them to get completely destroyed because they are kind of hard to come across. The other cool thing about the JDM ones is you got this little coin holder uh, underneath your steering column. The US versions never had that. So that was just something cool to me. Uh, another cool little feature. Um, this car does have a uh, Burke Technologies full three inch exhaust down pipe down. That was installed prior to me purchasing it. Um, sounds beautiful. I'm probably not going to change it unless I go something with a bigger turbo or something like that over winter here um, and change it up. So we'll do a walk around here. Otherwise, the car itself is it's clean. Um, for 65,000 miles, uh, the car's in really good shape. Uh, a lot of guys can't believe 
how low a mileage it has and the condition of it. So, again, Alcatara interior, or uh, door cards, and then the Alcatara seats, don't mind my soda, and Danism floor mat. So give me a second here, I'll pop the bay, and then we'll go into Transformers mode as Stradman on YouTube here says. Alrighty, so I got the hood here open, or the bonnet. Uh, this car is a Grand Touring, of course, so it's fully loaded, has power steering and ABS. Uh, it is missing the front, uh, or front trunk plastic trim, so I'm going to have to try to source one of those from a JDM one. Um, and of course the yellow donut, yellow spare, Japanese spares. We got the boot, or the trunk. Um, if you're an MR2 guy, you know that these are actually quite spacious. Um, I know in my NA, my US version, uh, with the V6 swap, I was able to fit a 10x10 tent, two pop-up chairs, and a cooler in my, my rear trunk. Um, this car did come with, I don't know if you can see it down there, uh, but there's a little box uh, underneath the ECU um, getting rid of the 200 kilometer uh, governor that the car has on from Japan. So that's nice. Uh, and then here's the bay. Um, Tim was kind enough uh, when, in his ownership, he had things powder coated. So he had the factory intercooler piping powder coated wrinkle black and then he had the valve cover powder coated wrinkle red. And to me it fits the car really well. Um, I don't think I will change that. If I do go with a different intercooler over winter here as well, uh, the new piping I will probably powder coat wrinkle black again, just so it, it keeps the theme that this vehicle has. Um, the only mods, motor mods, is it, again, it's got the three inch Burke Technologies downpipe, three inch exhaust. Uh, it's got a manual boost controller, which a local guy here hooked me up with, which I still gotta get, somehow get over to him and, and uh, reimburse him for helping me out on that situation. Um, and then it's got a Canon uh, filter on the factory uh, MAF or uh, AMF. So, otherwise the car is stock. And then it's pretty neat little features is uh, previous owner in Japan put all the little maintenance stickers. Um, of course, all those other stickers. And then there's actually the timing belt sticker in the door. So for as for imperfections in the car, um, one thing that kind of bothers me a little bit, and I guess it's not too bad, is that the, the front dashboard, or the dashboard I should say, had the lift issue like we have here in the United States with ours. Um, and then the owner in Japan just put some screws to hold it down. Um, it's really not noticeable, I guess, when you're looking at the car. But being the owner, of course, you always pick it out. So, of course, those, those screws there kind of... Are annoying um, so eventually I'll have to source it uh, a dashboard and then the only other thing that's kind of a flaw is even though the car has low mileage it definitely had quite a bit of seat time I guess or someone getting in and out of it so the bolster on the driver's seat is pretty worn um, I don't know what I'm gonna do if I'm gonna try to source uh, cover and try to replace it or have some other ones made but I would really like to keep the factory Alcantara insert so the, the last topic we're going to talk about is um, things that I want to do over winter uh, because of Wisconsin here we, we have a break here where we have to store our cars um, because they put that lovely salt on the streets and then we have the uh, rain and snow mix and crappy weather and crappy road conditions. Um, so my plans over winter for the car, um, I would like to um, get a different intercooler, um, either go a side mount or... Uh, go with a bigger side mount or possibly a trunk mount. I don't know how I feel about cutting into the um, rear firewall and putting a intercooler into the trunk, uh, especially on a, a you know a JDM MR2. To me, is just uh, a, rarity, a rarity here in the states, at least currently. Um, so I don't know if I want to do that. Um, I don't know what power goals I would really want to achieve. Um, I have a number in my head, but I don't know if it's going to be achievable with what I want to do. Um, so I don't know if, it, if a trunk mount would necessarily need or be a need um, for those type of power numbers. Uh, so I might just go with a, a bigger side mount intercooler like I had on my um, my hardtop turbo that I had a few years back. Um, other thing is, is uh, I'm going to try to change up the, the way this boost gauge is set up. It was more or less just a temporary thing, putting it in the um, factory air vent. 
um, try to figure out a different place of placement for it, um, possibly a different gauge. This one's just kind of a cheap Edquist gauge that I could find at a AutoZone. Something just so I could at least get some numbers. Um, probably get something with a different color face because I don't like white gauges. I think they're tacky. Uh, but in need, that's what I was able to get a hold of. So it works for now, um, but eventually I want to change that as well. Um, other thing is, is I got to put my coilovers on. I want to put coilovers on. I got the uh, 94 turbo brakes that I got to put on over winter here. Uh, that was the first thing I purchased um, to change on the car because I really like the 94 turbo brakes. Uh, I like the way they look. I like the stopping power of them compared to the, the factory um, 90, uh, 90 to 93 um, turbo brakes. The, the 94 pluses were definitely a lot bigger rotor face, a lot bigger um, uh, caliper uh, and, and pad setup. So it would be nice to put those on. Um, Otherwise, just drive it. Um, those are just kind of my little things. The car runs and drives perfectly fine as is. Uh, so it's not really a necessity to change this stuff. Um, but it's just kind of more or less things that I want to kind of modify and make it mine. Um, the other thing would be is possibly change the wheels. Um, the wheels on here, like I said, are they're nice. They kind of, they, I like the color. Um, and maybe with the drop, it might look a little bit better. But to me, on the car right now, the 16s just look little. Um, compared to my 91 uh, V6, I have, uh, or I had, uh, 17 by 8 plus 15 in the front, and 17, or 17 by 8 plus 20 in the front, 17 by 9.5 in the rear, or 18 by 9.5 in the rear, uh, plus 30, I want to say those were, and it fit really well in that car, especially with the drop, it, it fit really well inside the fender wells. Uh, the front's poked a little, the rear sat just right inside the lip of the wheel, or inside the quarter. So to me that looked really well. So that, I guess that's an idea, but again, it's not a necessity. The car runs and drives perfectly fine, it holds boost perfectly fine, holds 10 pounds, no issues. Um, I had the car dyno tuned at a local shop here at Los Auto Sports in uh, West Dallas, Wisconsin. And the car dynoed at 178 horsepower, 198 foot-pounds of torque on a Mustang dyno um, on a very, very humid day. Um, it actually ended up downpouring later that day. So it was very humid out and the car still produced, to me, decent numbers for what's done to the car and for the age of the car. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's my review quickly of the car. Um, the last two months have been amazing. My little daughter, uh, two and a half old daughter I have, uh, she loves this car. She loves sitting in the passenger seat or the, the left side um, and loves uh, just driving. She loves to ride in the car. Um, she demands me to get the yellow car uh, instead of driving the Lexus um, because she really she really enjoys this car and she has a lot of fun especially with she helps uh, antagonize I guess or creep people when uh, we pull up at stoplights and they see a, a toddler in the left seat instead of a an adult driving. So um, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys for viewing this video. Um, I guess it's a little bit long, uh, but I just want to kind of do my first impressions, I guess, or my walk-arounds, my first two months of owning the car. Um, it's been an awesome uh, 6,000 kilometers of driving. Um, hope to put a lot more miles on next season. Um, hopefully take it around to some, some more local shows and and get the attention and get the uh, the MR2 more known here around in, in Milwaukee. Um, there's a couple guys a little south here that have uh, you know crazy horsepower and they go to the um, Kings of the Street drag racing. Uh, Andrew with his camo wrapped uh, K series. So that's definitely um, making people think of the MR2. I know a couple of local guys here are doing K swaps. So it'll be interesting to see what next season has. Um, entailed for the MR2 community here in uh, Midwest, um, in Wisconsin, Illinois, and uh, Indiana. Um, and again, hopefully uh, another local guy that's down in Chicago, Jeremy, he gets his uh, his 3BZ turbo. Uh, he did some crazy body work to it over the last year. Um, has some ups and downs on it with some uh, shops and all that. Uh, hopefully he can get everything dialed in and get that car out next season too. So I think uh, 2018 will be a great year for the local MR2 community. Um, I'm back in one that's riding and driving. 
uh, hopefully get my blue one um, fixed up over winter here. <coughs> Excuse me. And get that one out um, so we can have uh, some really clean uh, MR2s that represent the community here in uh, the state of Wisconsin. So thanks again, guys. Um, hopefully this video was entertaining um, and not too dragged out. But uh, like I said, just wanted to give my first impressions and a quick review of my new car. So hope to see you guys around, and we'll see you in the next video.